Okay, folks, I want to show you our new open source React component that helps you help your users manage their own API keys. It's called API Key Manager, and you can try it out live without doing anything on apikeymanager.com. So just come to this website, it'll sign you in automatically, try creating a new API key, test, put in a bit of, a bit of data here, a bit of JSON data to test the metadata function and click create and you will then see the control in its full glory here where you can edit labels so if the user wants to change the label of their key this is my primary key for wednesday oh i can't type look at that primary key for wednesday let's save that it's updated there's my key i can reveal the key i can copy it i could roll the key in which case that old version will be set to expire for some time period and a new key will be generated i can delete expiring keys all very easy and i can even test the keys so if i paste in my key down here and hit test it'll return a 200 if the key's valid and tell me what the metadata is stored on that key so there's the metadata that we just created all very cool how would you do this yourself in your own experience? Well, we actually have a detailed walkthrough that shows you how to use the component with an open source sample, and I'm gonna take you through that just now. However, first of all, we need to spend a bit of time looking at an architecture diagram, because it turns out providing users with API key management, self-serve, there's kind of a lot involved. Actually, that's one of the reasons why people like using Zuplo's developer portal. We do all of this for you. You don't have to think about it at all. Um, but lots of people want to own their developer console experience and want to integrate this into their own developer-facing experience. That's totally valid. A bunch of our customers do that. But this control or these patterns and these examples that we're showing are going to hopefully accelerate your time to delivering this value to your customers. So let's talk about the architecture quickly. So... The developer console here, that is your experience where you have decided that you want to give access to API keys to your developers. And we've decided to use Auth0 login for that. You could use any IDP, your own identity provider, but we're just familiar with Auth0 here, so we chose that one. All of the concepts are common, you know, JOT claims, etc. So we sign into Auth0, and that sends us back a JOT token. And then we're going to send that JOT token to this Auth translation API, which I'm going to explain in just a minute. Now... To make the demo easy, we actually have set up an Auth0 tenant for you. So you don't even have to try and sign up for Auth0 if you don't want to, to use this sample. Very straightforward. We just pre-configured everything for you. Now this Auth translation API is interesting. Um, we're gonna talk about it in a second. So what these calls from the developer console are doing is it's doing things like creating an API key, setting the metadata, rolling the key, um, deleting keys. Those are high privilege operations. And typically to do them, when you're using Zuplo's API key store, for example, you need your management API key, which has a lot of power. You would never put the Zarpy API key into your own website. That would be very high risk. You would essentially be giving people the keys to the castle. This is a, this is a privileged secret. So what you would typically do is put it into some intermediary backend, which is a secure backend that you own, and do auth translation. And so with auth translation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a JOT token that belongs to an identity. We're gonna use that to understand something about the user and then make calls on their behalf where appropriate to the actual Zuplo API key service using the Zarpy key. Now it just turns out, coincidentally, that there is a really great product for building an auth translation API. It's Zuplo, yes. Now you don't have to use Zuplo for this, but it just makes for a really quick and easy demo. So we're gonna use Zuplo here to be the auth translation API that is an intermediary between your front end and your the Zuplo API key service in this case. Um, I do wanna reiterate, we've designed this control to work with anything. It's a provider-based model. The default provider that we provide works best with Zuplo, but it's very easy to plug in a different provider and use that instead. So let's continue with the flow. So we get the JOT token that comes into the translation API. The translation API is gonna do a little bit of verification to make sure it knows and trusts the user. And it's also then gonna load some information from a database that says, hey, which keys or which, which organizations does this user have permissions to, to manage keys for? And in the demo, we actually made this database 
excuse me, just a simple file, just a simple JSON file inside the project. But you could use a Superbase database or any API that you like to load up this information um, from your primary store, all very easy, all supported. Uh, we just wanted a demo that was kind of easy to roll with, so we used a, a simple file here. That is then going to call the Zuplo API key service if it deems the user has the rights to do it. And that's how we're going to get all these operations done. So those are the moving pieces. So let's go to the to the actual steps of the demo. I'm going to scroll down. It says, let's build a sample. I am ready to go. I am done talking. I'm done doing architecture diagrams. I want to see some code. And we're going to deploy our sample um, our sample auth translation API. And guess what? It's crazy easy. We're going to zup it, as we say. And that's where we just click this button. And that's actually going to help me deploy this example project to Zuplo in record time. So this is going to clone our public open source repo that contains the auth translation API. And that'll be ready in just a few seconds. And it's pretty cool. If we look in this, it already has all of the routes that you need, all of the policies that you need. Pretty much everything is set up. I just need to set up a couple of environment variables. And let's go through and follow the instructions to do that now. So if I go down here, it tells me that um, I need to set an Auth0 audience. I'm going to use the demo tenant here, the actual demo tenant that the, the Zuplo team have created for this sample. And so I'm going to copy this here. Go over to environment variables, add new environment variable, auth0, was it domain? Auth0 audience is the first one. Paste that in and save it. That is not a secret, that is public information, so we can just paste it as is. And then I'm going to add another variable, auth0 domain. Let's copy that value. Save that and then bucket URL. So this comes from, this is the API key bucket, which is a container for API keys that we're using um, with our actual Zuplo API gateway. So I'm gonna use the same project here. So I just go here to project information, copy this uh, long URL here. That is, that's my API key bucket API URL. Go back to environment variables, add bucket URL paste. Again, that's not really a secret, so I can just paste that in there. And then finally, I'm going to need the Zarpy key. And that's what gives this intermediary layer, this auth translation API, the power to call the API key service and do what it needs to do. Now, this is a secret. Do not disclose this to anybody. So I'm going to go to Zuplo API keys here, copy that to the clipboard, come back to environment variables, add new variable. The Zarpy key is secret. Yes paste that in. You guys don't get to see it and I'm happy and nobody can get that value out of the environment variables. It's only available to the runtime when it's needed. Now, I'm going to pause for a second. You might be confused. Why am I copying the Zarpy key from this project into its own environment variables? Well, in a real world scenario, I'd probably recommend you set up a separate Zuplo instance for your auth translation API from the Zuplo instance that's doing the gateway and API key authentication. You don't have to, you can put them all in the same place, which is what I'm doing here. But in that case, that would make much more sense because you need the Zarpy key for a different Zuplo um, project to do the management. So in this case, you're just building a simple API using Zuplo effectively. And so we just need to configure how they're gonna talk to each other across multiple APIs. To keep things simple or simpler, I am putting everything in one um, in one project for now. Okay, next step, we got to add some users to that database that we talked about that is a file. So let's go and take a look at it. I really hate our quotes, so I don't know why I'm doing it. Uh, let's go over to <laughs> let's go over to here and let's take a look at the files. And you'll see there's a data.ts file, and then you'll see the little database. This very simply is a map between an organization. Sales East in this case, and the members of the organization, their email addresses. Um, so Abdallah is the only member of this one right now. I am going to add another member, josh at zuplo.com, so that I can manage some API keys that belong to the Sales East organization. So I'm going to save my changes, and that will be live. And so I think I'm done with the, yeah, I'm done with the auth translation API. That's a pretty, that's a meaningful amount of work normally. So it's pretty slick that that's all it took. 
And now I need to build the developer console. So this is where I'm gonna take our Next.js open source sample and configure it that has the React component and configure it to talk to that auth translation API. So I'm copy this command. Let's go to terminal here. Let's just clear this so it's nice and clean. Paste that in. And it's gonna ask me for the project name. I'm gonna call it API key uh, manager demo. That's gonna pull down all of the files from the repo, give me a project, a Next.js project all set up that's ready to go. So that should be pretty quick. And then I'm gonna open VS Code on that project. And there we go, here is our beautiful project. And it's a standard Next.js project, so hopefully familiar with pretty much everything in here. If we take a look in the source, we'll see we have uh, some components and some pages. One of the key areas here is this key manager. This is using our API key manager control. And the most important piece of code to take a look at is the provider. So the provider is created up here, and you'll see this is using our default API key manager provider, which takes a URL and an access token, which don't worry, the sample takes care of getting the access token for you. That default API key manager provider is designed to work with the auth translation API that we have written in this sample. You could easily write your own implementation. Notice that it just um, inherits from this interface API key manager provider. You just create your own implementation of that. This is TypeScript, by the way. Create your own implementation of that and you will be off to the races. You can plug that in and the control will still work with your backend. So if you're not using Zuplo or Zuplo's API key management feature and back storage, then you should be able to use this control with anything. Okay, so let's go and see what we need to do with this. The first thing I need to do is get the URL of the auth translation API. Project information. Let's get the URL here. That is the URL of my of my ZUP, if you will. And we need to paste it in to env.local right here. Notice that we've pre-configured Auth0 to work with our demo tenant. If you want to use your own tenant, then you just change those settings there. So I hit save and let's just check the tutorial again. Wow, I think, I think I'm actually done. So let's give it a whirl. Boom, I have no API keys. That's because I've not created one yet. So let's go and create a new API key. We've made this sample a little bit more realistic. You, you have to set the metadata um, on the back end or on the, in the intermediary layer. Um, that's the correct place to set metadata for a key, not in the client. With apikeymanager.com, you don't own the intermediary layer, so we'll have to let you set the metadata if you want to do anything fun with it. Um, but in this case, you shouldn't do that. So we're just going to create a description for it. Test description. Let's see, that should load up. So there is my API key. I've built my own developer management console. It's looking pretty nice. I can reveal the key. I can roll the key. I can edit the label. And we are good to go. So that's how you would build your own API key manager experience using our developer console.